Hey guys, we're going to be looking at multiplication and division of complex numbers in polar form. Alright, let's get started. So let's say we've got two complex numbers here, Z1 and Z2, where obviously the modulus and argument are different for both of the complex numbers. So we're trying to figure out what Z1 times Z2 is. Now, what I'm going to do in the next... Uh, I'm going to actually show you guys how, to, uh, how the proof actually works out for this. So if you want to actually skip the proof and go straight to the formula, you can. Uh, I would say probably skip about a couple of uh, two or three minutes and you should get to um, uh, the generic idea behind it. But if you are interested in the proof, then let's get going here, all right? So Z1 times Z2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re uh, replace it with R1 cis theta 1 times R2 cis theta 2. So with this... All I know is that I know I can actually just rearrange this to R1, R2 multiplied by cis theta 1 times cis theta 2. So from this point onwards, I know that cis is simply cos theta plus I sine theta. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace both of the cis with cos and I sine. So what I'm going to end up with is R1, R2 bracket of cis theta 1 would be cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 and then cis theta 2 would be cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. So you can kind of see that it's actually a, a quadratic well we're gonna I'm gonna actually expand this out using the foil foil method and I'm gonna try and simplify it all right so with that in mind I have R1, R2, so doing the firsts, which is cos theta 1 times cos theta 2, which would be cos theta 1, cos theta 2. Then the outsides, which is cos the, sorry, I, I cos theta 1, sine theta 2. Then I do the insides, which is I sine theta 1, cos theta 2, and the lasts, which would be I squared sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Okay, now I'm going to start simplifying this. So I've got still got R1, R2 on the outside. Now, cos theta 1, cos theta 2 stays the same. However, I'm going to move all the real parts so know that that's actually i squared so I'm gonna bring that up here first so i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2 now I know that i squared is negative 1 so I can get rid of the i squared right there replace it with negative and I've got plus this lot here so as you can see i is a common um, factor in both of the terms. So I'm going to take i out and it will be written as cos theta 1 sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 cos theta 2. Okay, so with this in mind, uh, from this point what I would ask you guys uh, to do is check the check your formula sheet for a uh, compound angle formula because that's I'm going to simplify this into a compound angle formula. So if you have a look, I have R1, R2. So cos theta 1, cos theta 2 minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2 is the same thing as saying cos theta 1 plus theta 2. And on the right hand side, I've still got I. This lot would actually simplify to sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, so now that both of those angles are the same, theta 1 plus theta 2, I can simplify cos and I sine into R1, R2. Cos and I sine would become cis, theta 1 plus theta 2. So if I want to multiply Z1 times Z2, all I need to do is multiply the two modulus and add the two arguments. So that was the long-winded proof of how to actually 
do this, but all right, let's have a look at a couple of examples. So the first example here is work out the product of 2 cis 60 times 3 cis 30, which means we have 2 cis 60 multiplied by 3 cis 30. What do we do? We multiply the 2 modulus, which is 2 times 3, and we add the 2 arguments. So it's, in this case, it's 60 plus 30. Simplifying this, we would get 6 cis 90. Now this is in pol polar form. And if we want to change this to rectangular form, we do what we did in our previous video, which is expand this, which will be 6 cos 90 plus i sine 90. Sorry about that, jumped a little bit early. So expanding this, we have 6 cos 90 would be 0, sine 90 would be 1, and so we'd get 0 plus 6i, or just 6i by itself, which is in rectangular form. Okay, let's have a look at division now. So here's two complex numbers, and we want to divide this. Now, guys, I'm not going to do the proof for this because it's just pretty much what we did for multiplication, except, you know, it's just going to be longer, and I don't really want to waste time on this one. But in multiplication with our complex numbers, we multiplied the two modulus, and we added the two arguments. I think you want to have a guess what it'll be for divide. Well, we've got Z1 divided by Z2, which means we have R1 cis theta 1 divided by R2 cis theta 2. Now, if you had written this as what your guess was, which was R1 divided by R2 multiplied by cis of theta 1 minus theta 2. If you had that, you're absolutely correct. That's how you do division. Okay, with that in mind, let's have a look at a quick example. But anyway... Sorry, before I go to the example, this is the division part of it. Okay, let's have a look at the example now. So I want to divide 4 cis 120 degrees by 2 cis 30 degrees. So writing this down, I've got 4 cis 120 divided by 2 cis 30 equals 4 divided by 2 cis of 120 minus 30. And simplifying this, we would get 2 cis 90 degrees. And this is in polar form, and if we want this in rectangular form, we can go about expanding it, and we should end up with 2i. And 2i is what it, this complex number in rectangular form is. So guys, that's basically it for multiplication and division of complex numbers in polar form. I'm sorry about that long bit of explanation in the middle, but that's just for the purists who are interested in how this proof works. All right, but that's all for this session. Thank you for watching.